Hey there, it's round two of Payroll in Excel 2013, Office 365 developer versions out. You can be messing with it now for free, that's what I'm doing, and we have a extensive payroll sprap that I have built here in Excel, and um, would like to go over some enhancements to it with pivot slices and pivot tables in the reports. Uh, a lot of good stuff. If you want to go through, look at the previous video I have for payroll in Excel 2013, to go through all the data entry you need to do when you're entering information in here. I'm not going to bore everybody with it right now and go through that again, but I'm going to show how the reporting tools work. So you got a bunch of employees. Uh, I named them after famous physicists and uh, people that I would like to emulate in life. Rick Kurzweil is still alive. Alan Turing invented the computer and David Alan Greer is a comedian. But uh, these people enter all their information. This is a, for a weekly payroll template, somebody who gets paid every week. Um, and it's for Pennsylvania State, but there are any state, you can add any state's rates in there. This is just payroll, it's a sample I'm working with right now. When you enter in your daily hours, you do it here. Pick the employee number, like employee number one is uh, Nikola Tesla. So if you pick one, Tesla's name pops in there automatically. And then you put the date, let's say today is the 6th of October. How many hours did Tesla work? He works a big day, about 23 hours today. He hardly ever slept. So. You enter that information in, and then you've got we've got a weekly all data sheet where the weekly information gets pulled in automatically, and any other changes you need to make to their weekly pay stub or weekly payroll record, you do it here. This is the week we're in. Nikola Tesla, 23 hours. Apparently, I said he gets paid $35 an hour. You can give him more. Let's say he gets $50 an hour. We don't get rid of these 16s below here. We don't need them. So yeah, let's say he gets paid $50 an hour uh, and he has no additional commission or reimbursements or anything else. We'll just leave it like for now for, for brevity's sake. Pay stub. Pay stub's already set on week ending 10-6, which is the, the week ending he's in, and it is Nikola Tesla. Let's, let's go and show you how this changes when you do it somebody else. Alan Turing, for example, had zero hours during this period of 10-6 because I haven't entered any hours in for him, but Nikola Tesla does have some hours. He's got fifty dollars an hour and he's got twenty three hours worked and his paycheck would be eight hundred fifty four bucks and you'd have to send some stuff to the state of Pennsylvania and you'd have to send some stuff to the feds and where is all that this is what this video is really about that's all in a bunch of reports tabs I have I got three different sheets for reports main one is the 941 report now any time this is all pivot table this whole area right here is all pivot table and anytime you add hours or make changes or put in people's time and payroll and everything like that, you have to right click inside here and choose refresh because then it updates automatically and now it's current. Hardly anything changed because hardly anything changed here. But that's how you have to do that every single time you make any changes. Now that you've done that, you can look at anything you want to look for. Now I've created these things called pivot slices. One's up here, one's over here for quarter, this is one for name. You can move these things around, you can change their colors. Uh, by, by clicking up here where it says table uh, slicer tools up here and let's make this thing, I don't know, let's make it darker blue. Click that and all of a sudden the color of it changes and everything. You can change how wide they are, how long they are, uh, how many columns of information they show. Like you see I'm showing two columns of information when I'm showing the quarters yet I'm only showing one column of information when I'm showing the names here. Now these work in lieu of filters, meaning you don't have to use the filters that are here to choose what you want because yeah, because um, they're tougher to use and you can't really visually see what's going on. So they're here. Like If you want to see just what one employee's 941 looks like, their gross wages, their taxable wages, uh, how much federal tax was held during a period of time, you just click. Let's click on Nikola Tesla, right? He's right here. Boom. Clicked on him. He's made 6300 bucks apparently since the beginning of time. There's, there's other records in here. What We just care about what he made in uh, for this October 6th pay period because we're working on Q4 already for some reason. All you have to do, that's paycheck ending date. You can see this is paycheck ending date, not payroll, pay period ending date. Pay period ended on the 6th, but the check doesn't actually get written and cut until the following Friday in this version. So that's o October 12th. Boom, you click October 12th, everything changes now. And you just have the current information for this period. If you want to release this filter because you want to look at other periods of time other than Friday, October 12th's pay, pay date, you click this little funnel with the X up top here, click that, 
and everything gets released. Same thing I'm going to do over here with the employee name. I'm going to look at all employees again, so I click that. So it kind of gives you a visual. These little slicer bubbles give you a visual of what you're filtering and what you're not filtering, what you want to look for, and you can just simply click. I want to see David Alger's paycheck. Boom. He made 308 bucks during this period of time. Now, for most of reporting, you're going to have quarters. and you, most, most people file these, uh, small businesses anyway, will file these reports. It's 941. This state tax report is another one here. And the unemployment report. Usually do those quarterly. Okay, just we have three different pages of reports I have. Well, what quarter are we in? Uh, we're moving into Q4 now here in October. So if you click Q4, there's only one person I put any hours in related to Q4, and that was Nicola Tesla. You can see it there. Q3 is where everyone's data is in this sheet because it was all for September and stuff. So you click Q3, and all of a sudden this is your report for Q3. It's that easy. You're just you're done. And Q1 had nothing. Q2 had nothing. Q3 has something. Say you just want to look at certain pay periods within Q3. Watch what happens here. See how this is like dark red and light red? Here's the reason for that. Watch what happens when I clear this filter up in quarter here. Boom, everything turns red. That's because all these paycheck dates are in all quarters, if you're looking at all quarters. Well, if you're just looking at Q3, you click Q3, and it's smart. It moves just the active pay periods, which are in Q3, to the top. Those are the ones in dark red. These ones that are in light pink are are not related to Q3, so you, you can't even click them and you get nothing, right? So you know that uh, you want to, you know, if you're looking at one specific week within Q3, you could just click it up here. What happened on July 27th? Oh yeah, nobody worked yet. When did we start recording hours? I guess in August? Right there. August, beginning August 17th is when we first uh, started doing work here on this payroll template, and we've been recording it. And you can see, like, Alan Turing did not work at all. Or yeah, he did work. Yeah, I'll turn to it's David Greer that didn't work. See, David Greer had no hours in that time period, on that week. Well, let's show everything again. So, what else do you need to know about pivot slices, um, other than moving them around and changing their colors and clicking and unfiltering to show all once you've chosen one? Oh, if you want to show, say, two people, right? Say you want to show just. Uh, Albert Einstein and David Al Greer. Well, if you click on Albert Einstein and then you click on David Al Greer, it doesn't work right. See, it's just showing one of them. You can show more than one by holding down the control key. If you hold down control and click on the new one you want to do, boom, both of them are going to appear. Keep holding down control and you can keep adding people to this thing. And of course, you can clear it out when you're done and show everybody. So, holding down control will let you look at multiple things. It helps if you're doing multiple pay periods or something like that, right? Uh, but that's pretty much, that is the crash course in pivot table and pivot slices. The so we're back, and we're in the pivot table, and boom, it appears up top now, this pivot table tools thing in pink. You click that, and there's your insert slicer. And I don't know, what's a cool thing we could slice by? That, that, you know, we're going to create a bubble that's going to have all possible options in it. How about, uh, you know what, we're going to be pay period ending which is right at the date. Date is going to be the pay period ending. So you create a slicer, it pops up in the middle of the screen like this. And then I want to change the color. I don't like blue, so I will go with something we haven't used yet. Green, or, yeah, I guess. So now it's tough to see. <laughs> let's go Let's go with purple. Be a little better. So here's what's cool about this. right? This is the date of the week ending that happened. Well, in order to just click on one, watch what happens. You click on 128. Over here, the paycheck date becomes 1-3. I'll show them next to each other so you can see how, how this works. Because the filters are connected to each other on a table, all you have to do is click on one, and you get to see what the paycheck ending date related to that paper ending date is. And that's my cue to, to finish this up. But uh, slicers are incredible. It works in reverse, too. Watch. Say you want to do a paycheck date, paycheck 127. What, what week ending was that related to? Oh, yeah. It was related to 120, 112. Um, it's very, very cool. So I love pivot slices. They make life a whole lot easier and make reporting a lot easier. By the way, to get rid of your pivot slice, just right click on top of it, cut, and it's gone. Yay. So that's your semi-brief tutorial, payroll 2013 in Excel, pivot slices, pivot tables, all kinds of stuff, weekly reporting. If you want uh, a payroll template custom for your company, I do these for small businesses all the time. I got all, all different versions, and they're fun to use. They're better than anything else out there. They're better than QuickBooks. They're better than everything because they're awesome. 
So let me know, Ken at Ken'sTalk.com or 703-531-8960. Give me a ring and I will hook you up just like that. And that's payroll.